Hello everyone, it's Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating for all of you how to add a talking bitmoji to your interactive classrooms and have it automatically speak your message to your students without them having to click on anything. To do this, I'm going to be introducing to some of you, some of you may already know some of these resources, but they are some of my favorite free resources that I've discovered and that have come in handy while creating my interactive classrooms. So um, what I'm also going to do is to show you some of these apps because some of them are apps from my phone. I'm going to connect my phone to my computer just to demonstrate um, and so that you're able to see the steps that I'm taking. You do not have to connect your phone to your computer in order for these to work. It's a common question that I get because in a lot of my videos, I do cast my phone screen to my computer. So just so that you know, this is not necessary for you to do. I just want you to be able to see what I'm doing in the apps that I'm using. So the first one being Bitmoji, okay? So here's my phone screen. I'm gonna go in and I'm going to enter my Bitmoji app on my phone. Okay, here we go. Uh, you can see here I typed in the search term pose. Okay, that's how you get a lot of those full body Bitmojis in case you were wondering. Okay, and she is the Bitmoji that I have decided to use to place in my interactive classroom. So once you click on the one that you want, you're gonna go ahead and save it to your phone. Okay, for iPhone users, it might be a little different, but I now have it saved to my, my phone. Okay, um, I know a lot of iPhone users that I've spoken to have said that a lot of their files either go to their memories or their files. So if you're having an issue finding them, you might wanna check there. For me, my phone automatically set it up, set up a, a file folder in, in my gallery for the Bitmoji app. So all of the Bitmojis that I download immediately go right to that file. They're easy for me to find. Okay, from there, I'm gonna leave this app and I'm gonna go into another app that I downloaded. Um, this is the icon right here. It's called Chatter Kid or Chatter Picks. Okay, it is a free app, it stays free. This is not like some of the other ones where people have been using um, that require, you know, um, it's like a, a seven day free trial or whatever. This is going to stay free. So don't have to worry about canceling it after a certain number of days or otherwise you're gonna get charged. They're not gonna ask for any credit card information. Um, it's just, just a free app. So once you are in the app, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click where it says take a photo, but I'm not going to take a photo. I'm going to choose um, down at the bottom, you're gonna see pop up in the left-hand corner, my gallery. So I'm gonna to go to the gallery from my phone. Okay, and then here it, you'll see, um, I'm gonna go into my screenshots actually. And the reason why, and here, here's the, the Bitmoji that I chose. Uh, for, for whatever reason, there's a common complaint about this app that when trying to upload Bitmojis that are downloaded from your Bitmoji app to your phone and then uploaded to Chatterpix, it, it'll cause the app to shut down. I have discovered like a little hack, a little workaround for that. If you just take a screenshot of whatever the Bitmoji is that you've downloaded and then you crop it in your phone, it removes it enough from the app to prevent that glitch from happening. So I'm happy that it actually happened to me because I was able to figure out a way around it and share that information with all of you. So once you then take that screenshotted, um, cropped photo of your Bitmoji and you have it in your app, the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is to go hit next, okay? And then here, I have a stylus that comes with my phone. Um, if you don't, you can use your finger but you're going to basically draw a line right across her mouth, because that's where the talking line is going to be when you record, and then you're just gonna record your message. So I can just say something simple. Um, it's gonna give you like a three second countdown, like, hi everyone, thank you for watching my tutorial. Hello everyone, and thank you for visiting my channel. I hope that you visit again soon. Okay, so now it's recorded, and from there, I can just go ahead and click the next button. You could hit play if you wanted to listen to it. There are a bunch of filters that you can do, and you can put text in, um, but for this video, it's definitely not necessary. Okay, and from here, I definitely want to download this to my phone. So it says that it's exporting to my camera roll, which is perfect. This is what I want. 
export complete. Okay, so now I have my, my recording. It's gonna be on my phone. Okay, and I'm gonna show you there. Once I go back into my gallery on my phone. Okay, there's my recording, which is perfect. Okay, so I just wanted to check. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to a website called unscreen.com. So you can see it pop up. So I went into Google Chrome and that's where I got this website. This is what it's gonna look like. Okay, and then I'm just gonna to go to upload clip. I'm gonna to go to my files again. For you, it might be different. It might be under your memories or your files. Okay, and there is the recording. I'm going to click that to choose the option. And you'll see it'll come up with no white background. It's, it's removing the background from it. And it's actually not even necessary to record, you know, any words because you're not going to use the words. This is going to record it as a GIF. So there's not going to be any volume. What you're going to do after this is you're going to do the rest of it using a, a free website and you're going to use an audio clip in, in Google Slides. So there we go. It's all finished. From here, um, you can share. Some people are saying that the share option doesn't work. So um, a lot of iPhone users saying that this doesn't pop up for them. So just to make this for everyone, I'm going to go ahead and um, download it as a GIF. Okay, it's definitely downloaded. Okay, and then from there, I'm just gonna go into my Google Drive, which is here, okay? If you don't have the Google Apps downloaded on your phone, you might have to do that if you don't see them, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the plus sign and I'm gonna hit up, upload, okay? So here it is, this is the last one that I just downloaded to my phone, so I know that that's the file that I need, okay? It's being uploaded to my drive. Okay, so this is it. This is all I have to do from my phone. Okay, so I can go ahead and X out of the cast from my phone. Okay, and then here we are. We're going to be back on our slide. Now, from here, uh, you then have to decide what it is that you want your message to be to your students. Okay, because the only reason that I spoke in the app is not because that's the recording that it's going to use. It's just that that's the purpose of the app. So they're going to want you to say something. So just make sure that you have enough of some sentence, you know, you could really just be saying anything you want to make the mouth be moving. From here, I'm going to go to a, another free website that I love called Vocaroo. That's V-O-C-A-R-O-O. -O. Okay, this is what the website looks like. It's super user-friendly and really easy to use. Once you're here, once I click this, I can start talking and I can record my message. Um, so the message that I recorded um, sounded something like this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my class. My name is Mrs. Mazariego, and I will be your English teacher this year. Feel free to click on the images around the room to explore our classroom and the resources available to you. I really look forward to working with you this year. Okay, that's it. It's recorded. I can hit the save and share button. For me, I'm going to then download this to my computer. You see it's downloading down there, so that's perfect. Okay, and then I can just go ahead into my drive and click on new and file upload. Again, it'll be the last one that I, that I did in my most recent. So I'm gonna double click that and you'll see it's uploading here on the side. Okay, that's perfect. And now once I go back to my Google slide, I can then go ahead and hit insert. I'm gonna click audio. Okay, and then my Vocaroo is gonna pop up right here. That's the last one I just uploaded. Okay, I want it to go automatically. Okay, so when they open the slides, that's the first thing that they're gonna hear. They don't have to click on my Bitmoji, so that you don't have to worry about adding a, a text bubble. Please click on the Bitmoji to hear a message. It's, it's not, it's not um, necessary. So it's gonna automatically play. Okay, and here is my little icon. So I'm actually gonna make that bigger. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to go ahead and replace the image. 
So I can go to, I'm gonna right click actually, and I'm gonna hit replace image. And I'm gonna go ahead from my drive. Okay. There is my Bitmoji that's talking. All right, perfect. I'm actually going to delete this one so that you can see. And then the last thing that I have to do in order for this to work for my students is I'm going to go up to file and I'm going to scroll down to where it says publish to the web. Okay, and I want this to start automatically for my students. Okay, it's only one slide, so the auto advance doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to copy it. And then you'll see once I paste this into a new browser tab, and then I hit enter, it'll pop up and it'll immediately start. To and that right there is how you get your talking bitmoji into your classroom. Um, without your students having to click on anything, then they already have their verbal instructions on how to use the classroom. It's really great because Vocaroo, there's no time limit. So if you really want to give a little bit more of an introduction of yourself, you can do that as well. And there you go, That's, this is how you do it. Um, and like I said, I would recommend you when you are sharing the link with students to publish to the web so that it automatically opens up and will start speaking for your students. If you have any questions, comment down below, hit that notification bell, subscribe to my channel, and I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video. Take care, guys.